strong and powerful. Few primates can match a gorilla for sheer strength. And yet no amount of strength, it seems, can stop the inexorable march of man. Few defenses, no place left to hide. The mountain gorilla is in danger. In response to the need, Uganda's Bawindi Impenetrable National Park, established in 1991, provides protection for mountain gorillas and offers opportunities to track these shy giants. Well, the first part of the trip is through uh, farmland, banana plantations, through homes, music. <laughs> Some 325 mountain gorillas live in the park. That's about half of the remaining population in the whole world. The number one threat to gorillas is habitat loss. But the park's fragile boundaries, without fences or walls, keep human encroachment at bay, but just barely. The banana plantations and the farms come right up to the edge of the park where the gorillas are. And if it weren't for this park, these plantations would go further into the jungle and there would be even fewer animals than there are today. Mountain gorillas were unknown to the outside world until 1902. But once discovered, it didn't take long to push them to the brink of extinction. By 1979, there were fewer than 130 Bawindi gorillas creation of the park halted the decline and has even facilitated a slow but steady increase in numbers. And an unlikely component of this success story is humans. There's a reason they call this a rainforest. It has been raining all morning, but when you get this close to gorillas, you don't mind the weather. You've got the big male silverback, the first one that was habituated in the windy. Four different gorilla family groups in Bawindi have been habituated to the presence of humans. The Uganda Wildlife Authority sells a limited number of permits that allows a few tourists to trek into the park to quietly observe and photograph one of the four groups for no more than an hour each day. The tourist dollars ensure the survival of the park. Our mission statement for UWA is conserving for generations. But uh, tourism as another aspect of seeing that when communities will benefit, then we are also conserving for the whole world, not only necessarily windy. Mountain gorillas are mostly vegetarian. A big male can consume around 60 pounds of fruit and vegetables a day, and for dessert, a nest of safari ants. They pick them up by the handful. These crunchy little creatures must be the equivalent of spicy potato chips because the gorillas ignore the stinging ant bites just to eat one more. But for the gorillas to have a chance to live relatively undisturbed in Bawindi, the local people must buy into the concept of the park. And in the beginning, they didn't. In 1990s, there were asono fires. Most of them were just outright set and nearly more than a quarter of the park like, was burnt out. So people were burning the forest just to try to get rid of the park? Yeah, I mean, it was like a resentment. Uh, even a park staff, a park vehicle just drive out in the communities was a very difficult thing. Local communities had previously relied on forest resources, and the early conflicts made it clear that the park's conservation efforts must include their needs. Hello. Selling drawings or gorilla carvings and other handicrafts to tourists is one of the ways locals benefit from the park. My souvenir of the trip, uh, uh, pictures of gorillas drawn by people who actually live next to the gorillas. So how many for 5,000? How many? Okay, and there's your money. But just selling crafts isn't enough. So the Ugandan Wildlife Authority responded and guaranteed the locals full partnership in the tourism business. They get 20% of the park entrance fees. That's we give directly to the communities. We have about actually 90% of the, our park employees here. 
uh, right communities from around here. So that's one of the key benefits. Then other indirect benefits like hotel owners getting small jobs around here, carrying, getting porters around here. So many economic benefits that have gone direct to the communities. Sharing the economic benefits of the park turned out to be the best investment for protecting the mountain gorillas and their habitat. In the past three years, wildlife authorities say there have been no arson fires in the park. The Ugandans around Bowindi have come to understand the true value of this remarkable resource. And although they are still critically endangered, there is now hope for the future of the gorillas who only ask for a small space on a crowded planet.